Today's video will guide you through the process of installing, configuring, and utilizing the Route Genie driver app. This app, available on the Google Play Store or Apple App Store, enables drivers to log in, manage trips, and complete routes. Additionally, it offers features like driver profiles and availability settings. Depending on which add-ons to Route Genie your company has purchased, as well as which privileges were enabled by your Route Genie administrator, some of the features discussed in this video may not apply for you. Before proceeding, ensure you have the company ID, which can be located in main settings under the general drop-down menu. You'll also need the driver ID and password your company created for you. Make sure you have these details on hand, or you won't be able to log into the driver app. Now let's discuss downloading and installing the driver app. The process may vary slightly depending on whether you're using an Android or iOS device, but the steps are generally similar, although permissions might differ. First, open your device's app store, then navigate to the search bar and type in Route Genie Driver App. This is the name under which you'll find the app. Next, tap on the corresponding install button. Once the app is installed, opt to open it by tapping the button. You'll encounter a series of permission prompts. It's crucial to carefully read and agree to these permissions for the app to function correctly. Of utmost importance is allowing your location to be shared all the time or always allow, not just when using the app, or else the app won't function properly. Additionally, the driver app will request permission to appear on top, enabling it to provide essential trip notifications even when other apps are in use or the Route Genie driver app is running in the background. Once you've agreed to all the permissions, you'll encounter the initial login screen. Before entering your username and password, you must first input the company ID. This step is only necessary once unless you uninstall and reinstall the app. Next, input your driver ID and password into the corresponding boxes and hit the login button. It's crucial to note that both the user ID and password fields are case sensitive. If you encounter login issues, Ensure your phone isn't automatically capitalizing the first letter, as some phones tend to do this. Once logged in, you'll find various options available. At the top, there's a prominent green button that allows users to request login. If a shift is available, users can find it in the first menu option titled Today's Shifts. However, we'll come back to that later. Let's first explore the other menus. The next available option is Future Shifts. Here, Users can view any upcoming shifts assigned to them. If you have a shift scheduled for the current day but haven't started it yet, it will also be displayed here. Moving on, we have the History section. This feature allows users to review their past shifts. Upon opening this section initially, you'll notice it's empty except for two calendar dropdowns at the top labeled to and from. These dropdowns enable users to set a date range. For instance, you could leave the current date in the To field and select a date from a month ago in the From field, allowing you to view all shifts worked in the past month. Once a date range is specified, previous shifts will be displayed as cards in a column style list. The total hours worked across the entire date range will be conveniently displayed at the top of the list. Each card in the column provides detailed information about the individual shift it represents, including the date, start, and end times, the vehicle used, the number of trips taken, and the total duration of the shift. Now, let's click the back button to return to the main interface. Under the history section, we have availability. In this interface, drivers can specify the days and hours they are available. Upon first accessing the availability section, the currently selected availability is displayed on the calendar. Available days for work are highlighted in green. To adjust availability, tap the yellow button labeled Edit Availability at the top. In the Edit Availability section, users can either mark themselves as unavailable for the entire day by selecting the Busy All Day checkbox, or specify the times they are available for each corresponding day. To indicate availability all day, input 0000 in the From box and 2359 in the To box. After making adjustments, scroll down and tap the green Save button. Navigate back to the availability interface by clicking the back button. 
Further availability adjustments can be made by tapping the Add New button in the Exclusion section located under the calendar. To add an exclusion, start by specifying a date range for which the exclusion applies. At the top of the interface, you'll find From and To boxes where you can input the dates. Simply tap each field to open a calendar dropdown for selection. After entering the date range, a field and section will appear for each day of the week within that range. For longer ranges like a week or a month, only one field per day of the week will be added. If this isn't suitable, remember that multiple exclusions can be added. For each field corresponding to the day requiring an exclusion, input the desired times in the From and To boxes, or select the Busy All Day checkbox. Once completed, scroll down to the bottom of the list and tap the green Save button. Now, return to the Availability interface by tapping back you'll notice that your exclusion has been added to a list under the calendar. Multiple exclusions can be included in this list, and each entry can be edited by tapping the yellow pen icon or deleted by tapping the red trash can icon. Let's navigate back to the main interface using the back button. The final option available is the profile section. It's important to note that there's another profile section located in trip view with additional options. However, this particular section is somewhat limited. Users can change their password and company, turn off notification sounds, and log out. Now, tap the back button again. It's time to discuss starting a shift and taking trips. Keep in mind that you'll need a scheduled shift and available trips to follow along. You can either ask your company to create a practice trip and shift for you, or you can wait until an actual shift and prepare in advance. From the main menu, Select Today's Shifts, and then click the green Start Shift button on the Shift card. Next, you'll be prompted to log into the vehicle. Depending on your company's requirements, you may be asked if you take the vehicle home, and you may need to provide a signature and record the mileage of the vehicle. You may also need to complete a pre-shift vehicle maintenance checklist. After logging in, you'll be directed to the Trip View interface. Here, you'll notice several icons at the top along with the current status, which should read online. Your trips will be listed below, each with available options. At the bottom, you'll find three additional options. Let's begin by discussing the icons at the top. The first icon allows users to retrieve hidden notifications from the background. For example, if you have some time to wait before leaving for a trip, any notifications that appear during this time can be hidden. Tapping this icon brings back these notifications when it's time to depart. The next option is the built-in messenger. Tapping on this opens the chat screen, where drivers can respond to messages from dispatchers, administrators, or passengers. Messages are categorized under two labs, one for users and one for passengers. While drivers can respond to messages sent to them, they cannot initiate messages from this interface. It's important to note that if a driver is not in the chat section and they receive a message, it will still be displayed in a pop-up box. The driver can tap Reply to enter the chat menu. Finally, we have the Refresh option. Pressing this button will refresh and restart the app. The driver will be automatically logged back in and brought back to the trip view without any additional steps. This feature serves various purposes, such as resolving errors and counted during a trip, or ensuring that newly assigned trips appear in the list. Now, before we proceed with taking a trip, let's explore the options in the bottom navigation bar. The first one, Trips, should be highlighted in blue. This is the current interface displaying the available trips. History allows users to review the history of trips completed during the current shift. This section will be empty if no trips have been taken yet. Lastly, we have the Profile option. In this Profile section, several options are available that are not accessible in the Profile section on the main interface. At the very top, the driver can log out. Additionally, assistants and attendants can be added. To do so, the assistant or attendant simply taps the plus icon and enters their login information. It's important to note that for this feature to work, the company must have correctly configured and added the user accounts to the vehicle when the shift was created. Below that, we have Driver Info, which displays all the information of the currently logged in driver. 
Following that, we have Vehicle Info, which lists all the relevant information for the vehicle being used. Next is the Item section, where the driver can keep track of different items like stretchers and wheelchairs that are kept in the vehicle. If your company requires pre- or post-shift vehicle maintenance checklists, those can be accessed here. Simply enter the correct dates in the From and To boxes and click on the blue download button to retrieve the checklist. The current location is also displayed at the bottom of the profile for quick reference. Now, let's tap on the trips icon to return to trip view. In this section, your current available trips will be displayed and you can start taking a trip from here. Depending on what is available to you as a driver, you may also have two other columns available, return ride and available trips. These columns, if available, would be located at the top above your current trips. They allow for a driver to select will call trips or other available rides. While these columns provide more options to the driver, selecting trips from them will transfer the trip into trip view, and the steps to completing a trip are largely identical. Now it's time to take our first trip. In the top card, you'll see a list of information pertaining to the current trip. PU stands for pickup and DO stands for drop off. The cards also display the scheduled time, ETA, address, and other relevant information like pay and number of riders. After tapping the start button, a user can head to the pickup location. Directions can be received by tapping on the default nav app button, as the driver app doesn't provide in-app directions, but instead allows the driver to choose an external navigation app. Pressing default nav app will open a new app on your phone for step-by-step -step directions. Once the driver arrives, there are a few options. If the passenger is not out, the callout button can be used to send an automated message to the rider that the driver has arrived. If the passenger does not show up, no show can be selected. Once the passenger is ready to go, the driver can tap load. At this point, the app may prompt to record a few details depending on the trip requirements. This may include choosing if payment is accepted now or at drop-off, collecting a signature, or recording the current vehicle mileage. If you choose to collect payment at drop-off, you can return to the payment collection screen by tapping the payment button, which should now be visible on the trip card. You can return to the map by selecting the default nav app button. Once you have arrived at the final stop, select the blue complete button on the trip card. This will bring up multiple prompts that will vary depending on the trip and its requirements. If payment is being collected, first select the trip and then the payment method. Tap the blue collect button. If, for some reason, this step must be skipped and payment will be handled later, select the skip button in the top right corner. You may also be asked to sign and record the mileage again. And that's it. This process can be repeated for every trip on the route. When it's time to end your shift, Go back to the main interface. At the top, you'll see a green button labeled Shift in Progress with the corresponding time frame. You can also choose to end the shift or take a break. Let's first discuss taking a break. This will depend on your company's policy and available break times. If a break is available, the button will be blue. If not, it will be gray. To start your break, tap the button. A prompt will inform you of the break duration. Select the blue Got It button. If you forget to press this button, your break timer will still start. On the main interface, a timer will appear along with a new button labeled Back to Work beside it. When your break is over, tap the blue Back to Work button. A notification will ask you to confirm that your break is over. Finally, just above the Take Break button, there's a yellow button labeled End Shift. When it's time, tap it you'll be asked to confirm the amount of money received or collected. If the amount is incorrect, take a screenshot and contact your company immediately. Tap the blue Got It button. Lastly, you'll be asked to attest and sign once more. After submitting your signature, your shift will end. This concludes our tour of the Route Genie driver app. For more articles and vehicles about Route Genie, follow the links provided in the description below.